Reef DVM's coming at you with the using of some extra parts around the farm, starting with this uh, flywheel that we had from one of the apple presses. We took the flywheel, um, a bunch of horseshoes, bought two pieces of pipe and some, you know, ends for some steel pipe, um, and then just tried to recycle this um, new stuff in with the old stuff and try to make it into something we could work with. This is kind of the, the concept here. This is kind of screwed together by hand, but we've got kind of a uh, six way there on top and then we've got um, threaded nubs and end caps on it and then we made another one of these for the top that's only a five way um, here my daughter Tabitha is um, trying to wrench them on very carefully um, so she gets them in the right positions with the wording and so forth and what we're going to do is we're going to stick that on two pieces of, of um, steel threaded pipe and then we're going to stick that into the base of the flywheel and then tighten up the bottom of the flywheel. We're going to make this into a coat rack. It's a nice use of the flywheel so we don't waste it. Um, I had some of these um, end caps already and some of the threaded rod. So really we only had to buy a few parts, which is good. Um, once we kind of got the parts assembled the way we wanted, um, since Tabitha is going to enter this into the 4-H fair in our area, um, I'm having her do most of the work. Um, she's learning as she goes. As you can see, she's a little nervous about, you know, the grinding and so forth, but she's getting it down quite well. We grind the ends of these caps so that they're nice and clean when we want to weld on them. Just like we'll take the old horseshoes and we'll grind the inside of the horseshoes where we want to weld them onto these caps. So here she's just kind of taking the buffer and, and getting any crap that's off those horseshoes off. So that when we put those up against those end caps and weld them in place, we get a nice clean weld. Tabitha is learning how to weld. Um, it's a good skill, I think, for farm kids to learn. Uh, granted, I'm not the best welder. I will admit that. Um, some people say that I'm a really good farm welder. But anyways, we're going to clean up these old shoes and um, we're going to put them to use. There's no sense wasting good metal. So first thing I wanted to do was kind of level up the flywheel once she had that level. Um, I had her stick the first threaded rod in it. Now, the, the, the first threaded rod, uh, the end of it there doesn't fit in the flywheel, so I had to have her do some grinding to get that to fit in the flywheel. But there's a lot of in and out of the flywheel to make sure it's set right and make sure it was level. A lot of learning there for Tabitha. Part of a skill of, you know, somewhat eyeballing and somewhat using the level. Once she got it level, it was just a matter of tightening the, the key on this thing and really snugging it down. And obviously for her, um, there were times where, you know, Dad had to step in and just tighten it a little more. Welding was probably my biggest challenge, and I knew it was going to be for her. Getting over, the, you know, the shock factor of, of, of spot welding and then trying to lay a, a nice steady bead. Obviously we got, you know, some sparks here and there, and, you know, we wrecked the tip once or twice. That's okay. Uh, we were able to cut it back and, and make it work. But, you know, she learned how to MIG weld pretty good. And as you can see here towards the end, she's starting to actually lay beads in, which is good. Now, is it perfect work? No, but it's good work, and I'm sure the judge will appreciate it. When we got done, um, she had, you know, little metal pieces on things, little beads and stuff, little slag on things. So I just had her take, you know, the ball peen and chip a couple of them off that she got stuck on it and just kind of clean it up the best she can. Now this particular set of four horseshoes, you can see we bent out, so that's going to be the top. The other set we did straight up and down. For cosmetic sake, we wanted to make them look like shoes that were on a horse, so I had her take our horseshoe nails. You've seen us do this before. And um, I had her take the um, uh, bolt cutter and cut the heads off them and then glue the heads into the horseshoes just to make it look nice and cosmetic. So here she's taking the super glue and she's taking those those heads of those nails and she's gluing them into the um, horseshoes. It just, I feel, gives it a little bit more of a cosmetic factor. When we paint this thing kind of a black gray, I think I'm going to do a hammer finish with her so she can learn how to do hammer finish paint. Um, we'll then come back and we'll take some really um, pretty silver and um, we'll stick it on the top of these to kind of make them, you know, show up a little better. This is the middle set. As you can see, these horseshoes are standing straight up and they're not bent out. We intend to use this, obviously, for coats, but the difference with that middle set is, is it can hold gloves and stuff, too, versus the top set will really hold the coats better. 
I wanted her to really sand it up so we could get that hammer paint finish um, to really bite. So as my son is playing with one of my impact drivers there in the background, Tabitha had the fun job of, of sanding it up. She did a really good job um, doing it in one direction. And then basically it's time to paint. I know a lot of people hammer paint with spray paint, um, but my 10-year-old here is not quite ready for it. So out came the brush. And we got a really nice finish on it. Um, on the posts, on the poles, on the flywheel, on the on the shaft, it really turned out quite nice. She did a good job. It took us about four nights to get it all painted with her, especially with the brush she was using. But it just it turned out really slick. I think as you can see here, um, it looks nice. Then it was time to assemble it. Um, Tabitha was pretty excited about this face. And granted, fair isn't until July, so I won't be able to use my coat rack till after fair because I don't want to dare wreck the paint on it before fair. But it's a good winter project to do. It's about 10 degrees outside right now and the wind is blowing so there's no sense out there bucking the cold and the snow and we can get stuff done like this for the for the upcoming summer. Tabitha I hope learned a lot doing this. I hope you folks did too. It's a nice use of horseshoes uh, that are, are used. It's also a nice use of a flywheel. Turn it into something like this and and and, and make it nice. As you can see, she just threads on this first section, then she puts on the pipe on the next section, and then we'll thread the top piece on, and we'll have a nice sturdy coat rack. This type of coat wrap is really stronger than anything you can buy in the store. Um, personally, most of the stuff in the store comes from overseas anyways, and I'm sorry to say it, they just use a thinner metal, which just doesn't hold up well. Sure, it's at a, at a price point people like, and it didn't take them over a week to get done between the sanding and the painting and the welding, but it won't hold up like this. This will be something that when she's done with 4-H, I'll be able to put in my shop and treasure that my daughter made it, and um, it'll hold up for years. This thing looks really nice, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video of us putting together a horseshoe coat rack hanger. I know Tabitha's pretty proud of it, and as she should be. I hope she does well with it at the fair, and I hope you subscribe and follow our channel as we put out great projects like this.